All right, what's going on, you fam? Ryudin here. It's been a minute since I've done a Q&A video. I think the last one was when I had 75,000 subscribers. It is crazy to say that we are almost four times that amount. I actually set a goal for 250,000 subs this year, and somehow we smashed right through that. There is a strong possibility of 300,000 before the end of the year, which is wild. So again, really appreciate all your support, all the new subscribers. It means a lot. I'm so grateful that you guys, uh, you know, continue to stick by me. I see so many people saying, hey, I've been here since, you know, year one. It is crazy how it's year five already, all this other stuff. So thank you for all of you that gave me a chance and have stuck by me. And for all of you that have decided I might be worth uh, running the journey with. That's pretty fun. But without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into a little Q&A. Maybe you guys have some questions you want to know about me. Uh, although I am just the voice, I am also a person. Maybe I have some interesting quirks that you guys want to know. Starting off with... It looks like Endokuba asks, so, uh, you know, Super Saiyan Teen Go uh, Gohan is the cult, right? Like, Super Saiyan 3 Goku is cool, I guess, but Super Saiyan Teen Gohan, though, love you. I love you too, bro, but no, uh, let's not get another Gohan. For those of you that are new to the game, maybe you popped around 4th year or 5th year anniversary. Uh, this game has this dangerous trend of making every Gohan unit the best unit in the game. All my veteran players remember the traumatic experience that was both the purple Super Saiyan 2 Gohan during his peak with his never-ending sidesteps and the never-ending demise of the red Zenkai Super Saiyan 2 Gohan. The dude basically could win games with one blue card, two blast cards, and an ultimate. I'm not exaggerating. The best blue unit in the game got snuffed out by a red. A boy duel asks, Squid Games? I don't know what that means, but if he means the show, yeah, I watched it and it was an awesome show. I really, really enjoyed that one. I'm going to be honest, that feels like a show where you don't want to make a sequel. Does that make sense? It almost feels like you want to leave the organic impact there. It's kind of like the Saw movies. I think they were good when there was just one or two, but once you start making a series off of it, it kind of loses that initial finesse and freshness about it. Uh, I think Squid Game should have just ended as it was because it ended off a little loose, but at the same time, you know, it's up to the viewer's interpretation on what the ending is implying. I think it would be better to leave it there. Uh, Walter asks, what do you plan on doing once Legends dies down? This is probably something a lot of different gadget tubers ask themselves um, because we've sort of attached our growth in our channel to one singular game, especially one that has a limited lifespan like a gacha. Uh, the question of what do you move on to next is always there. That's a big reason why I really try to push the second channel because like you, I'm also a gamer. I enjoy games. I enjoy a wide variety of games. And honestly, I feel like my personality is able to come out more on different games versus Legends. Because at the end of the day, Legends is a rather simplified game where it's a bunch... I don't want to say it's a bunch of coin tosses, but there's a small subset of things you can actually do. But you can't really say the same for games like Resident Evil, Outlast, Alien Isolation, Yakuza, you know, Starfield. I feel like I get more of a chance to show who I am. And uh, I think it's more enjoyable, more personable. So... To answer the question, my plan once Legends dies down is probably to just jump onto the next big thing. That's usually how it goes, right? Whenever one big Dragon Ball IP mobile game gets closed, uh, they usually have another one already cooked up and ready. So if Legends ever decided to kick the bucket, I would probably venture into some more Dokkan. And if that decided to kick the bucket, it's whatever the next game is. While maintaining the second channel, of course. Be sure to check that out just so that if these two ever decided to go toast and for whatever reason there's no Dragon Ball mobile game and I just all of a sudden don't know what I'm doing, at the very least we have that already established channel to just try out a bunch of different things. It's a good time over there and of course follow my Twitch too. We do like to stream here and there. All right, next question. Overhex asks, you've probably gotten this question before, but how did you get into YouTube? What made you want to start recording videos and what keeps you motivated to continue? The way I started goes way 
back. It actually is because of Rhyme Style. So he was doing a video on Demon King Piccolo, the original yellow one. Uh, this is like the second or first step up we ever got in the game. That yellow Demon King Piccolo gets dropped with Hercule, the red one, the first character to have endurance. I think I was fortunate enough to pull the Hercule, but I never had this Demon King Piccolo, so... I was like, oh, I want to see videos on this guy. How good is this guy? Stealing Dragon Balls? This sounds so overpowered. And of course, I was already watching Rhyme and Nano and stuff like that for Dokkan videos, but he also was like one of the first Legends YouTubers too. Uh, so I watched his video and he's obviously whooping everybody. And then it gets to the end. And then I notice it's me. And I'm like, oh my God, I remember this match. I was on the toilet when this happened. I wasn't really paying attention. It was embarrassing. I got stomped out. I was like, oh, this is horrible. I got to get better. Uh, so I went to I went to Reddit. Reddit for me, it seems like a nice convenient place just because if you are looking for information about anything, a subreddit for it already exists. There's already like a curated filter for what you need to know. And I made a post there and I asked, I'm like, hey, you know, I got stopped by Rhyme Style. How do I get better? A lot of the suggestions were play the game, record it and just watch yourself. Give your own feedback. How do you get better? You know what I mean? Just watch yourself, see your mistakes, and then just apply them and play more. Hell, maybe even upload them and have other people, you know, make comments about it, see how you're doing. That's how it got started. It started with me initially uploading gameplay just to get feedback. And then eventually, uh, I started gathering a small community, started getting, you know, small number of people, 10. 15, 20, and I'm like, wow, this is so cool. 15 or 20 people are watching my videos, watching me play like an idiot. But more importantly, it's still 20 people. That's a classroom in high school. That's so awesome. Uh, so, you know, I almost became uh, fired up to keep up and keep people entertained for that reason. Uh, I really enjoyed that. And then it started to become a small community. I had people making comments. They're so like, hey, you know, you're getting better. Uh, this is great. Keep it up. And, you know, it kind of just went from there. I'll never forget my first commenter. His name was Fabian. I will never forget this dude. I always remembered Fabian. That guy was a very, very OG. I think he was my first ever legend subscriber. I was making YouTube videos on and off about like uh, Counter-Strike case openings and montages that were obviously not that good and Battlefield 1 with my friends and all the shenanigans we were doing. But he was my first Legend subscriber and I remember him always leaving comments. He doesn't anymore. I'm sure his life is far busier and he's doing really great things. But I'll never forget that guy, Fabian. So Fabian, if you ever come across this, I, you know, I appreciate you. Thank you uh, for being the OG commenter. I just realized I went on a random tirade and never answered the question. But how I got into it to get better at the game, to get back at Rhyme Style, we ended up having a rematch. Uh, the thumbnail, I think, is like Super Saiyan Blue Evolve Vegeta and like Purple Metal, uh, Purple Cooler, the transforming one. I think that's the one. Yeah, we had a rematch like a couple of years ago. It was, it was good times. Uh, Rhyme, you know, big bro, really awesome that he even extended the opportunity and said, we should play again. I'm really grateful for that. Um, now, how do I stay motivated? Honestly, uh, motivation is a hard thing to quantify. I'm not always motivated. I think eventually, once motivation, you know, gets kicked out the window, it starts to become discipline. And for me, it's just becoming disciplined to release content because that's just what YouTube demands. I enjoy Legends and I enjoy you guys. Sometimes I don't uh, enjoy the game as much, but I still feel disciplined enough to want to push out a video just because I, I feel like I owe it to the audience that, you know, not necessarily relies on me, but really wants from me to have the, the, the latest thing for them to enjoy. So, you know, when a new LF drops out, and even though I'm really tired from work, uh, I still, you know, stay up, get the summons and the showcases out because some people rely on what I have to say, what my gauge is uh, for their own decisions. Sometimes they just wait to see how I, you know, use the character, what, what, how, how good they look, how bad they look, and they spend their hard earned CC, sometimes actual money uh, based off of what I may conclude. So uh, I, it's an obligation to my viewers that keep me motivated to continue. 
All right, the next question. Christian Estrada. This guy is my boy. He's always commenting about how he's watching the videos, doing his cardio. I I know those feels entirely, dude. You know, being on the Stairmaster cardio, you know, three miles per hour, 12 incline. You're just you're just running right through it. The last thing you want to be thinking about is, oh my God, I got 30 minutes. That's six divisions of five minutes. And those five minutes, if I break it down to two and a half minutes, 12 of those, you know what I mean? That mental gymnastics, sometimes a good video gets you past that but my boy asks yes bro i got stuff i want to know gym grind fitness goals all that feel uh like the homie for real so in terms of gym grind um you guys may not know this if you don't follow me on twitter but you know i'm really into fitness uh i was very strong i'm, I'm a tall guy i'm like six two i i don't know if i'm taller than that i'm gonna maybe i'll just say i'm six two it's just the last time i measured my height was several years ago at the doctors and i, I I don't know if I grew. I'm just gonna say I'm 6'2", but you know, I was decently strong. I had a 525 deadlift and it's not sumo and it's not conventional either. It's like the squat stance deadlift and it's mainly because uh, I have a hard, I have like really, really long legs. Like uh, I'm, I'm basically 75% legs. Um, super long legs, uh, long arms. So I have a weird stance for my deadlift, but you know, 525, I had a 405 squat, that was pretty tough because, you know, my range of motion is forever. And a 305 bench, that was me at my peak, my strongest. Um, I ended up hurting my back. Uh, you know, during the pandemic, the uh, gyms in my country got closed. And they're in this weird flip-floppy pancake mode of, okay, the gyms are open again. You can go back to the gym. And then two weeks later, they close them. And, you know, the gym is gone. And then, you know, three weeks later, they're back up again. And it was irritating. Uh, I think anyone here that knows how to build habits know you got to grind it out for three weeks. Eventually, your brain just understands this is the thing that we do. It's harder to do it. But then if you stop for two or three weeks, it becomes broken. It's almost like that synergy is gone and you got to build it again. And it was exhausting. So the pandemic on and off, the gym is weird. I was thinking of building a home gym, but I live in an apartment and obviously that's going to be weird. I don't want to damage anything. And uh, I, I figured, you know, not to mention people were price gouging home equipment. Holy crap. Everybody knows this, but peak pandemic. Well, it was well over a dollar per pound for literally anything. So a 30 pound dumbbell was like 45 bucks or something. 45 pound plates were like $70. I'm not paying that money. I don't care. So I try to make do with like rice bags, soap, uh, big soap jugs, whatever. Really stupid, but I tried my best. But obviously it's not the same as, you know, 300 pounds on the bar, four or 500 pounds. Um, I tried to do calisthenics, but for some reason, this is the dumbest part. They banned parks too. I'm not kidding. They banned parks too. And I live around a bunch of old people that I don't know why, but they kind of double up as police. So when I was doing pull-ups at the, at the monkey bars, they're like, Hey, you can't do that. We're going to call police because it's banned, whatever. I'm like, all right, listen, I don't want any trouble. I don't care. So I try to make do with what I could. Uh, and it obviously wasn't enough. The gym's finally open again after like a year and a half of weird training and everything's going good for a while and i end up hurting my back i your your body has a thing called muscle memory it will know quickly that hey you know this is all familiar to me we're so used to having this muscle on our frame we can get it back you've you stimulated before your central nervous system understands so i was getting my strength back but i i guess i don't know maybe all the working from home just made myself like more stiffer or something i don't know um but i got a little bit careless with the weights and if you imagine how you squat with long legs you tend to lean forward more it's just it's just anatomy it's just how it works um when i did my squat i was pushing for a volume personal record i was going for eight reps uh i finished with seventh and i figured i have one more in the tank but i was really tired so my form broke a little bit and my sh my hips went up first and i basically did a good morning with the weight and I hurt my back and that sucked big time. Um, that was last April. And let me tell you, I didn't feel anything really during the day, but as the nights went on, it got really bad. Like I finished the workout, I was okay, I got home. My back felt a little weird, but I'm like, oh, you know, it's expected my form was weird. 
the next day it got worse i had i had a lot of pain there and i had trouble getting out of bed the next day it got to the point where i couldn't move it was really 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 bad and here's the worst part when I was at my strongest, I was also relatively heavy because I was obsessed with chasing a 315 bench. So I was like 225 or something, which is not impressive. I just wanted to have three wheels under the resume. Um, so I was higher in body fat too. So I was like, I don't want to, I don't want to cut because I can't maintain the same amount of muscle if I do a cut because I can't train properly. But at the same time, I'm not trying to bulk and get heavier. I can't, you know, I can't stimulate the body enough to make these calories go to where I want. So I'm just going to maintain myself, maintain, whatever. So, <laughs> so I maintained my weight for the most part throughout the whole pandemic, everything. And then finally decided to up my calories a little bit just so I can, you know, supply the body with nutrients and everything to get my strength back. And then it got hurt. So not only am I hurt and immobile, but I'm a little chunky too. So it was it was just the worst experience. Um, that was last April. I finally became normal this year around June or July. I'm talking about diligent physio. I'm very, very hardworking. So I was not skimping around. I was doing my physio. I was eating. I was doing everything I could to heal my back. I didn't have a herniated disc, but I had a very bad injury. I had a herniated disc, sorry. But herniated discs sometimes come with nerve pain and damage, and I didn't have that. I just had severe pain, immobile pain. Like, I spent two months having difficulty getting out of bed. Another two months, I couldn't even walk. Another two months after that, I couldn't uh, stand for extended periods of time. It was both embarrassing and a wake-up call for me to be a lot more careful with my body. But um, yeah, it took a long time to get better. So in terms of fitness goals now, my goal is just to get my back healthy. I am now able to train properly, obviously with more careful measures, but I'm cutting now. I was, you know, I stayed chunky for so long, uncomfortable under my own skin. I'm like, I don't care anymore. Uh, you know, I just wanna, I just wanna be lean and happy with the way I look and functionally strong. I don't care about, you know, being like a power lifter anymore. I feel like I could have, push for higher numbers but i'm going to be realistic here oh i the injury made me realize i care more about just being healthy and happy versus being the biggest strongest guy in the world so my fitness goals now have changed towards making sure my entire body is functional healthy and mobile so i still do my squats i don't do deadlifts anymore i it's just because i don't think the risk for versus reward is worth it anymore but i still train four times a week i'm always doing cardio i'm always staying active um but my original powerlifting whatever i've def definitely put on pause i think i'm i'm just I don't know. I think an injury like that just makes you take for granted what being mobile is like. I still have slight pains. You know, if my back is rounded and I wash my face, I can feel it there more. So I don't think my back will ever be 100%. But just realizing now that I'm better, I'm not going to take that for granted and take care of myself. So fitness goals are no longer powerlifting oriented. I just want to be healthy, mobile, still train. Uh, but I think I'm going to opt for more of a lean aesthetic look versus being, you know, burly grizzly bear for powerlifting. This went on for 10 minutes. I'm sorry. I can talk till the end of time about literally anything. I hope you guys don't mind. So my bro, gym grind fitness goals. I'm now cutting diligently. I am going to cut until the end of the year. I should be around nine ten percent body fat by then assuming the math checks out i will not be anywhere near my old size but i don't care and then from january 2024 until december 2024 i will be doing a lean bulk in an effort to try to grow as much as i can just lots of volume lots of careful training uh, and then um I will then be cutting at that point again. So one year lean bulk, get back all the pandemic strength loss, all the size that I originally had, and just be happy with myself. That That's the plan, my boy. Misfit Godly asks, how old are you and face reveal when? Uh, so I'm anywhere between two years old and 193. So I'm somewhere in between those two. I'll, I'll let you guys take a guess. Right, now the thing with the face reveal, this is, this is such a uh, iffy thing for me because uh, people ask me all the time, and it's two things. One, I don't really, I haven't really felt 
the need to do it. Does that make sense? I feel like you guys are content with just having my voice because, you know, fortunate for me, you guys think my voice is, you know, a nice voice to listen to, uh, but I haven't really felt like I needed to. Um, if I ever feel like I should, I will. I'm, it's not a question about looks because whether, whether I'm an ugly duckling or I look like Brad Pitt, I, you know, it doesn't really matter at the end of the day. God gave me this face and I'll make do with whatever face I got. That's the best I can do. I'll keep myself tidy and healthy. But if I still look like a pile of poo, then what am I going to do? I will be the tidiest pile of poo I could ever be. Um, but the other reason is due to work. My work, work, it's not, I'm not a contractor. I'm a full-time employee. Uh, but whenever you sign on for work, you have to sign like a, like a legal documents and stuff. And mine essentially said, you are not allowed to do a side hustle. You got to keep your undivided attention to the work that you're doing, because not only is it important, uh, because you are paid for, you know, you're paid well for functional focused hours. Does that make sense? They want you to be able to give it your all during your eight hours of work. Uh, because you're paid handsomely for it. So that's the reason why uh, I would not want to plaster my face only for them to identify it and I get into, you know, some legal trouble. It would be a bit weird. Uh, if I ever decide to do YouTube full time, maybe at that point I would. Um, but, you know, earlier question asked, you know, what am I going to do if Legends dies? And uh, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know. I was thinking of, you know, every once in a while, I think about doing Legends full time just because it's, uh, it's, you know, it's a soul sucking amount of work to do, you know, your nine to six, nine to five, whatever, you know, also training, also just being a functional, well tidied adult, being, you know, a brother to someone else or whatever, you know, also a son to some parents, you know, just being a person and responsible adult who takes care of himself and works nine to five and does YouTube and streams and does the other channel. It's it's quite a bit of work, so I get tired and I think about uh, I think about doing it full time just so I can ease up my workload, be able to focus more energy. But, you know, sometimes the games make questionable decisions. I get scared. You know, Blazing got kicked off the can suddenly. What, what, what would I do if that doesn't work? You know what I mean? That's my only source of income. And even though I have my finances right, it, it's just weird. The, the engineering market is very weird right now in that it's hard for people to get jobs too. So the question of face reveal, I guess I don't know when. I guess only when I feel it's absolutely necessary, but I don't think it is for you guys. At some point it'll happen. I feel like I should, um, but I don't think it'll be anytime soon, if that makes sense. Who knows? Maybe some drastic decision, uh, changes could happen and I end up doing it. We'll have to see. Slurzino asks, So Rai, when it comes to a small channel like me, and I think a lot of others that watch me as well, I, I see the smaller YouTube channels that are here that comment all the time. I see you guys and I'm, you know, I'm proud of the work that you guys are doing. You guys are being very creative. You're being consistent. Good for you guys. Keep it going. Um, so Rai, when it comes to a small channel like me who isn't very consistent, what advice can you give me to kind of boost my confidence when uploading as I get in my head a little too much when it comes to views and all of that? So the biggest thing I can tell you is be creative in your own way and be consistent. Despite there being so many different Legends creators, each person has something they could uh, add to the table. Each person is their own person. You could have your own unique spin to the game that will make you far more entertaining than me or anybody else. You could have your own takes on it. Everyone can exercise their creative freedom to have a place in doing Legends content. There's no such thing as one singular guy owns all the market share so no one else has any freedom. Regardless of how saturated anything is, if you are diligent enough and if you are creative enough, you can squeeze through and make it work. So my recommendation for you is don't let the numbers discourage you because any number beyond one is at least a person that took the time to see your videos and there will be millions more like that person. I think in a previous question I said, wow, five people saw my video, five, 10, 15, 20 people. That's a classroom. 
every little amount I was grateful for. So be grateful for all the people that are there. Be consistent with uploading. YouTube does like that and interact with your community. Be sure to talk to them, comment with them. It really does help with the whole algorithm thing. I'm sure you hear that from every major YouTuber saying it helps the algorithm like favorite, subscribe, whatever. Uh, but it really does. So interact with your community, your audience, make them bigger and, you know, harbor people that are like you and shape the community that you want. I think I've done a good job of making a community of people that are, you know, like minded in me and that they're respectful, but at the same time, understand this game is still just a game. They don't take it too seriously. They don't let it bother them too much. They try to have fun with it in both the great days and the bad days, you know, like the SBMM. It's like, all right, I fight the same team every day, but we still try to have fun with it because it is a game. So try to apply all those things, be consistent with the game and, uh, you know, exercise your creative freedom and just give it time. You know, uh, it takes a long time. Uh, I think I shared a tweet before, four years ago in May, I only had 3,000 subscribers. You know, it's been four years to get to the point where we were. It takes a long time to grow to where you are. Uh, I, I think I'm, I got very lucky as well too, but there's no saying you can't be lucky as well. It's uh, the harder you work, the more chances you have to being lucky. So keep working hard, be consistent, and uh, grow a community that you can be proud of. My boy Playbox asks, between working your regular job and YouTube, how does your daily routine look like? So I'll try to do a play-by-play -play, uh, to the best that I can, but it, it sometimes differs. So let's say, let's say it's Monday. Monday is leg day for me. So I get up at around 5.45 every day. Uh, the first thing that I do is, you know, wash my face, brush my teeth, change and i go out to the gym i don't eat anything i typically train fasted not because i think it's some tremendous health benefit or it makes me better than anybody or anything like that i only do it because i feel most comfortable at that point and i have the most energy that's it and the only reason why i wake up early is because my schedule is busy um if you're able to get the same amount of work done waking up later then prioritize that get your sleep get your energy i don't think it makes me better than anyone waking up at 5 45 i honestly would prefer if i didn't have to but anyways, so we're off to the gym. I train until about 7.45 to 8 o'clock. Usually it would be this amount of time between all the working sets, warming up, cardio. It would be about 8 o'clock when I get back home. I have a protein shake and then I start working. Work, work, working. So I'll work um, depending on how crazy things are. You know, I could sometimes I could eight. I could wrap up at that seven and a half hour mark and I'll be done at say you know, 4.35 ish, but you know, most of the time I have a lot of responsibilities. So I have to work a little bit longer. So I'll sometimes be done six, seven o'clock. When it's six or seven o'clock, um, I will typically start working on a legends video. I will, whatever, you know, if a new character comes out, Zenkai buff them, come up with two new team compositions, maybe a discussion video. That's what I'll do next. And then I'll be done around 8.39, depending on how good recording goes. And then, that's pretty much it. I'm not kidding. That's that's it. I try to get eight hours of sleep. I try to get both things covered. I try to eat healthy, you know, cook, take care of things. That's pretty much what it looks like. A lot of my time is spent on those things. It kind of does stink and it does sound unflattering, but that's just how busy I am, really. A good day would be uh, just like that. I would train and then let's say I finish work. Uh, let's say I finish at four o'clock. Let's just say I finish my workout earlier. I don't know. I'm feeling super strong and I finish at four o'clock. I'll get the legends video out, you know, 530 and then I'll have dinner, you know, cook, clean, whatever. And then I can unwind. It's maybe seven, seven thirty, stuff like that. The, the, the difference between a tremendous day and a regular day is honestly about two hours when all my responsibilities end. that's pretty much it. So it is super busy, super jam packed. But uh, it is what it is. That's just what I signed up for. So that's what it looks like. I'm sure for you it looks very similar because I know you too have a YouTube channel. I'm not sure if you work full time, uh, but you know what the hustle is like. Uh, despite YouTube being what it is, uh, it honestly is a ton of work. Uh, Slamit Diaz asks, if you are working on your biceps and triceps, what are your workout variations you're doing? Uh, so for me, I typically let compound movements actually address biceps and triceps. Does, it, you know, does that make sense? So for example, I would, you know, let's say you're doing a pull day. You got your, I'm not saying for me, but let's say you got your deadlifts, you got your rows, 
you got whatever, then you can just do maybe one or two additional bicep exercises at the end of the day. Some of the best bicep and tricep growers are going to be pull-ups and dips. And people are gonna be like, oh, but those are compound chest exercises or whatever. Yeah, that's the point. It's kind of like squats for your legs. Think about it that way. Think of a pull-up as a squat for your biceps. Think about dips as a squat for your triceps. You're able to load them with far more because there are more muscles involved. But you're definitely gonna get far more work done by doing heavy weighted pull-ups for your biceps than you would with any bajillion sets of curls, any bajillion sets of skull crushers. So you want really big biceps and triceps, get a really good pull-up and get a really good dip. I promise you if you're able to do 15 clean, full stretched reps of pull-ups, you're gonna have a good set of biceps and a great, a great set of back. Your lats will be great, your back should be pretty good developed. And if you're able to do the same thing with dips, then you probably have a really good looking chest, shoulders, and triceps. Cool. That's the most important thing. Focus on your compounds. Uh, Kim Yeji says, let's see, do Dokkan content such as Red Zone stages will boost your viewers and more YouTube content outside of Legends? It's not really a question, but I, I, I'm sometimes curious about that. Would people want to see Dokkan content? You're going to have to let me know in the comment section below. I... I've been playing Dokkan for like 1600 plus days, right? I never spent any time thinking about any of the numbers or any of the optimal anything. I just, honestly, I just make a team that falls under the category leader. I don't care what the synergy is. And then I just pair the two that give the biggest unga bunga number. That's, that's it. I don't care about who's the best slot one. I don't care about who's the best slot two. I don't know what a floater is. I don't, I don't even know what order units come in if i put them in the third slot i i don't care about any of those things i just i just whatever i just make any random team so i don't feel like i would make good dokkan content i feel like i'd be like the most irritating person to watch because i don't do anything optimally so you let me know in the comment section below if you'd want to see i could do red zone stages but i just don't know what i talk about i don't even know what i would do it's just i don't know me, I don't I, I don't really know if that's what you guys want to see you got to let me know I, I'm uh, completely up to it I just don't know how thrilling it would be a boy Legic asks if we get an ultra super saiyan 3 goku will we get a face reveal I, I already answered the face reveal thing but I don't think ultra super saiyan 3 would really push for me to do that and he also asks what was your very first anime and what other animes would you recommend my first anime hmm I'm trying to think would it be Gundam Wing from the 90s? I got no idea. I honestly got no idea. But if I had to recommend animes, Gurren Lagann, Hajime no Ippo, um, Code Geass for sure. Um, uh, crap, I can't think about them off the top of my head, but there's one comedy one I want to recommend. Um, uh, what is it? Grand Blue is a great one as well. Stuff like that. I, I think those are really, really great. I'd recommend those ones. Definitely Hajime no Ippo, though. Fighting Spirit. I recommend that one the most because I don't know how this goes so underrated, but it is the perfect balance of comedy, slice of life, and that they're just living their life, and shonen, and that they have a fantastic combat. I'm telling you, this is such a good anime. It does not get enough respect. I highly recommend you watch it. My favorite character from there is Sendo, and you will find out if you watch. Just watch the anime. So damn good. Mikey asks, what do you do in real life? I am a software engineer, so I do software things. Yeah, <laughs> I think that's pretty much how you answer the question. I'm a software engineer. So I, I, I often get a lot of comments where people are saying like, what, you do stuff outside of YouTube? I, I thought you just do this. No, I, I work full time. I work bonus uh, full time. I do overtime too. But yeah, I'm a software engineer. That's why I'm always complaining about being tired because although there's not much physicality involved in my work, I unfortunately deal with the opposite side of the coin of fatigue and that is mental fatigue. And mental fatigue is probably a more difficult thing to recover from because your brain loses the desire to exert any effort into anything when you're mentally tired. It almost gets masked as depression, but 
you are unbelievably unmotivated, unmotivated and unwilling to put any effort into anything. And it's almost like your brain is so tired. It doesn't care about the consequence. Like, let's say you have to get a report done at 9 a.m. And it's 7 a.m. And you just don't care. You don't care. 8 a.m. You don't care. 9 a.m. You don't care. Oh, you failed the class. You don't care. You're just so tired and burnt out and done. That's usually what I have to deal with when it comes to the mental fatigue. So I'm a software engineer. Yeah. XZ says, since so much time has gone by, how have you been doing? I have watched you since I was in 10th grade and now I'm in college. Thanks for taking care of me through your videos, but I do wonder sometimes how you go by, how you go by your day. Uh, firstly, that's, Honestly, once you put things into perspective that way, it is crazy to me. It really has been five years on this platform, releasing content, just being a goofball myself for you guys. And you guys have let me be part of your lives as you, you do your own thing. Some of you may be software engineers yourself now. Some of you maybe graduated college, finished high school. Some of you, I don't know. I don't want to say get inspired by me, but maybe I, I, I light a little flame to help you turn into some big, beautiful fire. You know what I mean? I, I hope that I've at least sparked your day at least once. I think that's the biggest win I can take, but you know, my, my days are okay. My days are busy, uh, just like any other person. You know, we got responsibilities and things to do, but my day by days are packed, but uh, I don't mind it. That's what I signed up for. You know, congratulations for going into college also. That's, that's pretty sick. And for everyone else that has now gone into college, that's awesome too. And even if you're not going into college, congratulations for working hard and getting to where you are. That's super sick. Om um, Patel asks, do you have any super long-term goals for your channel, both main and second channel? Um, well, first of all, thank you for knowing that a second channel exists. That means he's a viewer. That's cool. Um, long-term goals, I, d I don't know. Uh, I think maintaining growth is what I would always like to keep doing, keeping guys entertained, keep doing what's going on, but also try to, you know, innovate a little bit. I'm just always so strapped for time that I, I can't exercise as much creative freedom as I would like in keeping things fresh and different. I feel like, you know, Rhyme and Nano and them do such a good job of keeping things so unique with every single video between the cool cuts and the edits and the unique little um, flavorings that they add to their videos. I wish I could do the same, but I'm often just so smacked for time. Um, I would like to keep growing the channel, keep doing new things. My hope is that the main channel can branch out to new stuff slowly. Uh, maybe different Dragon Ball games or just something different. My hope is that the second channel really kicks off. Uh, honest, honest to God. Mainly because I, I almost like it more there because we can play whatever we want. I really do. Um, we had a really good run with the whole Walking Dead series and a lot of these decision-making games, you know, um, uh, like, uh, what's it called? Uh, the Quarry and games like that one. Uh, those do typically pretty good. Unfortunately, now the channel does, doesn't do as hot because uh, I had a, I had a break where I wasn't uploading just because life got too busy. And by too busy, I mean, out of the blue, we find out something that should have been, you know, released and scheduled for way later, just creeped up around the corner. So I was working like 11 hour days at work and doing legends and I just couldn't. I, I got completely fried from that, but I really wish I could have maintained it. Um, but my hope is main channel keeps growing and eventually dabbles into something new. And the second channel uh, sees a lot of substantial growth. I feel like it's a it's a fun place. If I had more creative freedom to, you, you know, edit and make things fun over there too, maybe. But uh, yeah, I'm hoping for bro a growth on both channels, we'll, we'll say. A lot of people are asking me about, you know, Super Saiyan 3 in general and what I like about it. I think the big thing for me was when I was a kid, uh, it's one of those episodes that left like the biggest impression in my mind when I saw it. Um, the whole transformation sequence to me was sick. The whole earth is shaking. Goku has to look into like his inner Saiyan in order to bring forth the form. I feel like a lot of people are overlooking what all that imagery was when they zoom into his eye. We see like you know, little, uh, you know, glass broken and 
what looks to be him transforming from, you know, the great ape down to what looks like Super Saiyan 4, down to a child. It's like, that's him going through his entire Saiyan being to bring out the form. Between the epicness and the impact it had on the Earth and what it meant to him, and just the fact that it has such a cool look and transformation, it's my favorite form without a doubt. Obviously, Super Saiyan 1 is the most iconic transformation because it changed the game for what anger-based transformations were and auras and whatever. But I'm going to be realistic here. I think Super Saiyan 2 wasn't that creative because it felt like a natural extension off of Super Saiyan 1. And I am not a fan of the god forms either because they look like recolors of the already of Super Saiyan 1. I'm not a big fan of those. That's why I like Super Saiyan 3 and 4. They feel more primal and more along the path of whatever these Saiyan transformations are. Because it's like, the further you go into being a Super Saiyan, it's almost like the more raw and primal version of yourself you're bringing out. So that's why Goku loses the eyebrows and his hair grows. Because do you see any apes with, you know, like a silverback gorilla with eyebrows? No, they don't have it. It's, it's almost like, I don't want to say the word alpha, but a strong eyebrow bridge and everything. He just looks so primal and just raw. That's why I like Super Saiyan 4 too. It's the same idea. It's almost like they went further down that path with the whole entire body being enclosed in hair. It's, they're becoming more primal. That's why I like the form. I think they, they feel like unique forms that alter the look that I feel the God forms in Super Saiyan 2 just didn't do. I'm not a fan, I really don't like Super Saiyan God. I think this whole stupid, you know, you know, put our hands together and sing Kumbaya and you become a God was dumb, lazy, and I think Super Saiyan Blue is lazy too, because it, it, think about how stupid that is. You are a God who went Super Saiyan, so you're blue. That's boring and dumb. I don't like that at all. So I'm not a fan of the God forms. I think the Super Saiyan 1, Super Saiyan 3, and Super Saiyan 4 are peak forms. But yeah, that's why I, the reason why I like Super Saiyan 3 a lot. It was the first official, drastic, canon change to the form that just felt the most raw. The Super Saiyan 4 wasn't canon, and I saw Super Saiyan 3 first. I think it was just the best looking form. It was so sick. Yama asks, how many cat pictures do you really have? I have an infinite amount. I basically have a bottomless well of meme cat photos. That's why you should follow me on Twitter, because I, I just meme around with like different cat photos all the time. But either way, I think I'm going to wrap up with Q&A there. I think I answered a lot of good questions. Um, I didn't want to answer the ones that were too much Legends related, just because, ah, you know, it's, I, I feel like a Q&A should be more about me less so about you know the game that we play so hopefully i answered a lot of your questions hopefully you learned something new about me we're bound to do this again um but hey if you ever had a question you urgently want asked be sure to let me know in the comment section below or follow me over on twitch and maybe when i'm streaming you can pop it up there i'm always responding to people but all in all when this q a goes live i think i'm finally home from my trip and uh yeah it should be a good time I'm recording this on September 29th, so I don't think Legends will drop anything hype in that point, but if they do, then uh, it'll be funny to go back to this Q&A. So thank you guys for sticking by me for all these years. Uh, I look forward to seeing what the next few chapters look like for us, for this channel, the second channel, and the game. So thank you guys for everything. I'll talk to you in the next one. Peace.